Hi, um, I would love to share some thoughts about genetic testing of embryos. And so this is obviously a big topic as a surrogacy and egg donation uh, coordinator and consultant with Proud Fertility, which is a surrogacy and egg donation consultancy, I always get these questions. So as an intended parent myself, I have actually never used um, genetic testing on any embryos for my journeys. Um, the important thing is uh, genetic testing really is more of a new thing, new as in not like yesterday, but this wasn't really that big or available in say um, when I first started my journeys in 2011, so or 2010 actually. So how do people actually get pregnant back then is that they had three-day embryos and now we have five-day embryos, six-day embryos, um, and then people do all these genetic tests. So from me, I have really zero background in medical. Um, I, I do see quite a few cases where intended parents now do do uh, genetic testing of embryos and they are typically uh, done with, you know, in a groups of eight. So you have to pay for eight embryos to be um, genetically tested and the, the labs and whatnot take, um, uh, biopsies of these embryos and you can do PGD and PGS and to be quite honest I have um, really no idea how to even say those words because it's just kind of funny like PGS PGD and I just know it's really really expensive and and my understanding is that it's always going to work better and until very recently that I had um, more discussions with some of my um, people that I know in the community that I started thinking, oh my gosh, like, are there other sides of this? And I certainly have in my experience as a consultant seen um, some of my files where intended parents have had genetic testing of their embryos and the surrogate has still miscarried or it still resulted in no pregnancy. So I feel like as a consultant that I can express that just because you do genetic testing, it doesn't actually mean it's going to work for sure. And I think that's something that I'll probably get crucified anyways, first because I'm saying this out there right now, but it's something that I think you should do what's right for you. Um, there's, I guess for me, the hard part is, um, what are you doing this genetic testing for? Are, I feel when people are doing this because the genetic testing is a byproduct for um, gender selection. That's a whole different discussion and I don't really want to get into that at all. Um, gender selection is not um, allowed or legal actually in Canada and people still try to do gender selection where they can, such as in US clinics. So there are other options and I guess for me, if I want to ask you to think about what your perspectives are on um, like the actual source of the egg donor and how you will feel when it comes time to having um, a genetic test after. Um, so I guess for me, the point of my blog here above is just to really help you understand that there is another side to this. Just because it's available and clinics will often say, it's so good that you should do this. Let me uh, charge you some money here. Um, you might want to think about it. So I totally, as a fertility consultant, tell all my clients that it's something that you should consider. And these options were not necessarily available to myself when I was going through surrogacy five or six years ago. Um, and I may or may not have actually done it myself too. It's really important finally to let you know that people actually did have babies back then through IVF and having babies through IVF happened and it worked even with three-day embryos. Um, and so it's just, that's, that's a really important thing for you to keep in mind. Um, uh, we do have a great blog as well about um, day three embryos and like different types of embryos. So I hope you'll check out our blog. It's www.proudfertility.com slash blog. And um, by all means, welcome. So thank you very much. I'm Nathan Chan. 
the Managing Director of Proud Fertility, Egg Donation Surrogacy in Canada, and welcome! Thank you! 